Hello everyone. In the last class, we have discussed about the process of photosynthesis, how it occurs in plants, as well as what are the outproducts that we get during photosynthesis. Now today in this video, we'll be discussing how the different components of food or the different nutrients are being synthesized by the plants. So let us start. The topic is synthesis of plant food. Now plants synthesize carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis. That day we have got an equation where carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll they make or they prepare carbohydrates which are said as glucose or starch and also release oxygen gas. You can go back to that equation of photosynthesis there carbohydrate is produced. Now the carbohydrates are made up of what? They are made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. These are the three components that carbohydrates is made up of. Now these are used to synthesize other components of food like proteins and fats. These carbohydrates are again used to synthesize other components of food or the other nutrients such as proteins and fats. Now what are proteins? Proteins are nitrogenous substances which contain nitrogen. They are nitrogenous substances. Now how will the plant get nitrogen? Now the plant will get nitrogen through the air. No, not directly through the air. We know in the composition of air about 78% of air is made up of nitrogen gas but the plants cannot directly take the gaseous nitrogen instead what they do instead this gaseous nitrogen is converted into a usable form which can be used by the plants how this is done with the help of certain nitrogen fixing bacteria called rhizobium the name of the bacteria is rhizobium present at the roots of the plants. So do remember the name. The name is rhizobium which is present at the roots of the plants. This bacteria helps in uh, getting or converting you can say the gaseous nitrogen into a usable form which can be used by the plants. Now the soluble forms are absorbed by the plants along with water. When there is rainfall, these soluble forms get dissolved with the rainwater or whenever we pour water uh, to the plants, then these soluble forms get dissolved in the water and they are being absorbed by the plants. So that's it in this synthesis of plant food. I hope you all have understood it. Now moving on to the next topic. The next topic is other modes of nutrition. That day in the first class itself, we have discussed there are two modes of nutrition in plants. One is the autotropic, although most of the plants uh, follow this autotropic mode of nutrition. But there are also some plants which uh, get their food through the heterotropic mode of nutrition. There is one more mode, which is the heterotropic mode of nutrition. Even human beings and animals also use this heterotropic mode of nutrition. And also some plants are there which use this heterotropic mode of nutrition. Now plants which do not have chlorophyll cannot synthesize their own food. We already have discussed in the photosynthesis process that chlorophyll is an important component or an important ingredient for food making process in plants. But what if some plants do not have this chlorophyll? They cannot synthesize their own food. Then what they will do? If they cannot synthesize their own food? 
such plants like humans and animals depend on the food produced by other plants yes then obviously will be dependent on others just like humans and animals so plants some plants are also there which are dependent on other plants for getting their food now what is such a mode of nutrition called it is called heterotropic mode of nutrition when one plant is dependent on other plant for its food consumption you can say then it is called heterotropic mode of nutrition now the plant on which it depends is for food is called the host plant and the plant itself which depends on the other plant is called the parasite plant as it deprives the host plant of its valuable nutrients so in that case we can say even humans and animals are also parasites so we'll not go to humans and animals but the plants which cannot make their own food are called parasitic plant and the plant on which it depends for its food is called the host plant okay now an example is given kaskata which is also called in indian name amar bell let me show you the picture of kaskata or amar bell so this is kaskata or amar bell i think you have all have seen not this plant or not this tree is amar bell but the above the tree on the leaves you can see the all these things like web like structure this is amar bell i guess most of you have seen this these are some green color uh, not green you can see you can see there is it is not greenish in color if it is greenish in color that means it has chlorophyll but you can see it is yellowish in color so definitely it doesn't have any chlorophyll so for making its food it just depends on this other plant or this tree you can see it is just above the tree just like a web so it engulfs the whole tree and whatever the tree is producing as a parasite it is getting all the nutrients from its host plant okay this is one example of uh, a parasitic plant you can say there are also some other types of plants which gets its nutrition from other organisms these are called what insectivorous plants i know one example that have clicked in your mind so let me start some plants can trap insects and digest them for example the pitcher plant you all have known you all already know about this pitcher plant you have heard about it i guess so this pitcher plant can trap the insects and digest them so here it doesn't depend on other plants it depends on other animals such as this insects for the pitcher plant the pitcher like structure is the modified part of the leaf now before going to this topics let me show you the picture yes so this is the picture so the second point says the pitcher like structure is the modified part of the leaf this thing is a part of the leaf it is not that it is a back it is a leaf part of the leaf so this is the picture bag like structure then the third point says the apex of the leaf forms a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher so this bag like structure is the pitcher and this thing the upper portion which looks like a lid just like the lid of a dustbin you can say so it is called the apex of the leaf so this apex of the leaves also forms a uh, you can say it is like a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher this is the mouth of the pitcher now inside the pitcher what is what is there inside the pitcher there are some hair like structures which are uh, in the downward direction so what happens is that whenever an insect lands inside the pitcher the lid closes so that the insect cannot fly away and it gets trapped inside the pitcher inside this pitcher it gets trapped so inside this pitcher as soon as it gets trapped this hair like structures uh, grabs them grab, grabs the insect and it entangles it it doesn't let it easily come out of the pitcher as a result what happens slowly by slowly the insect gets uh, stuck there and slowly by slowly the 
Inside the pitcher, there are some digestive juices which are secreted, which comes out of the pitcher and slowly it dissolves or digests this insect as a whole. And in this way, the insectivorous gets their nutrition from other animals or other, you can say, other organisms. So that's it in today's video. So I hope you will have understood it. And uh, if you have any doubts, you can go through the book and then please ask some uh, ask doubts if you have and read the topic which i have discussed in this video and i hope you'll have a clear idea if you read the textbook so that's it for today thank you and have a nice day